The year was 2017 to when the most sought after highly talented point guard rose to the top of his class and was regarded as the best point guard at the time. This was a prospect who had the ball on a string, especially in the open court, reminiscent to Kyrie Irving, but has always had that dog in him and has constantly showed flashes of Russell Westbrook. Now many people projected him to be one of them ones in the NBA and truthfully it hasn't been nowhere near that. This is what really happened to Trayvon Duvall. Trayvon Duvall was born on August 3rd, 1998 in Queens, New York. And while coming up in an area that always has been known to breed some of the most tough hoopers around, Duvall would actually become inspired by his father as he would often take him to New York City streetball courts and watch N1 mixtapes together. And from there, Duvall would constantly emulate flashy moves into his arsenal. But it was noticeable at a young age to his family that he had something very special about him on the court because at just the age of five years old, he was torching his defenders while playing eight and under. And throughout his upbringing, there would be countless of late nights to when Duval's father would put him through tough workouts on the court and always criticize what he did wrong, which did result in the two jawing back at each other. That only turned into his father saying something along the lines of, son, listen, if you don't want to do this no more, just tell me so. And although at the moment it was just so tough to keep going, he would just take a couple breaths and resume. Times like that allowed him to thrive, especially as he got closer towards high school. By just the eighth grade, the way he operated at the point guard position, no doubt made him poised beyond his years. Because not only did he have a stellar, tight handle, the athleticism was already there. Duval would attend St. Benedict's Preparatory School in New York, New Jersey during his freshman and sophomore years. During his sophomore campaign, he led his squad to a 31-6 overall record, as well as an NCSAA state championship. There, he would score 25 points, 8 assists, which really allowed him to make a name for himself and for his junior year he transferred to advanced prep international in dallas texas there he would team up with terrence ferguson billy preston and mark vital he would honestly just continue to stand out with his blazing quick first step and his outstanding court vision and by now he was already six foot three and nobody could really stay in front of him that summer duval competed in the under armor association circuit and played for the aau team known as we are one where he would manage to win the under armor championship as a senior, Trayvon transferred to IMG Academy in Florida. He would be able to maintain averages of 16 points, 8 assists, and led IMG Academy to a 26-2 overall record. And no matter who he faced up against, he held his own. And by the end of the season, he was ranked the number one point guard in his class, ahead of talented guards like Trey Young, Jalen Hands, and Colin Sexton. And to a lot of people, it was no question around Duval being one of, if not the the most NBA ready player in his class. The only real flaw in his game was his jump shot, but it just seemed as though he did everything else relatively great, which seemed to make up for his lack of shooting. The consensus five-star recruit was no question, seemed it to be the most poised and college ready guard at the time. Trayvon ended his high school career becoming a McDonald's All-American as well as being a Jordan Brand Classic selection. And Duval made the decision to sign a letter of intent to play college basketball at Duke University over schools like Baylor, Kansas, and Arizona. It was seeming like it was the perfect position for Duvall to be in. He had Coach K, one of the most prestigious coaches of all time, but also had five-star recruit freshmen, Gary Trent Jr., Marvin Bagley, and Wendell Carter. But somehow, things just didn't pan out. In fact, playing alongside other one-and-done caliber NBA prospects would actually go on to be a mistake for Duval, and that's something that would go on to change his whole trajectory of his career. And while on a nightly basis he had all eyes on him, the freshman guard would struggle, and because of that, it was like his flaws were exposed to everybody to see. He did perform well in spurts, and showed that he did have the potential to be a top-tier pick but it would start to become clear as day that it would have been a way better look for him 
if he would have chose a school that would have had less comp on his team, like Oklahoma where Trey Young was the main guy, or somewhere like Alabama where Colin Sexton was truly able to play his game. Honestly, his shot just wasn't going in, and his shot mechanics did not help the situation. He only scored 10 points per game and shot 42% from the field, 60% from the free throw line, and just 29% from three, while being the fifth leading scorer on his squad. And just like that, while barely a year had passed, his freshman teammates in the starting lineup had all passed him in the 2018 NBA draft boards. And while it may have seemed as though he was going to stay in really develop his game for a second year, Trayvon decided to enter his name in the draft. Now in the combine, he did have the second highest vertical. He also had massive hands as well as having a six foot nine wingspan, but he would go on to go undrafted. Now the good thing about it all was that he had options and quite frankly Duval was quite surprised by all the number of teams that called him following the draft but it only made him realize that he was still an NBA caliber talent and before he knew it he would be acquired by the Houston Rockets for the summer league and in his debut while coming off the bench he produced 20 points but that would only be a high point of his stint with the Houston Rockets because from there he would be signed to the Milwaukee Bucks on a two-way deal which included him playing for the G League affiliate. At this point in time, it was seeming like he could possibly be the steal of the whole entire draft, but he would go on to just suit up for only three games in the 2018-19 season. And right after his rookie season, they chose to not sign him. On October 26, 2019, Duval was selected by the Iowa Wolves with the fifth overall pick in the first round of the 2019 NBA G League draft. On February 24, 2020, he would show glimpses of positive upside as he posted 14 points, five rebounds, five assists to go along with two blocks. And after not getting re-signed following the season, since then he's been in and out of G League affiliates, just trying to find his way. Now, after spending time on the Denver Nuggets G League affiliate, the Grand Rapids go, during the 22-23 season, he averaged 12 points, four Four assists and three rebounds while shooting 48% from the field but only 24% from three and not too long ago he signed to play for the Metros de Santiago located in the Dominican Republic but from being regarded as the sixth best ranked prospect coming out of high school to becoming coach K's first undrafted one and done player in Duke history despite the hard drop off and the amount of flaws he has at 25 years old he honestly still has the potential to really be a vital asset on somebody's NBA roster and with that being said ladies and gentlemen this is the Trayvon Duval story.